using metrics for quality profiling. So this is moving us into back to this um, kind of slightly different topic, and I'm going to. This is basically my last um, discussion item, um, and it's all about metrics. So, what are metrics? Is the first point. Well, we've got a, a lot of different types of metrics that um, uh, that, that are produced. Uh, there are metrics covering compliance to coding rules, so that can be a density metric. You can also have the same kind of compliance or adherence to design constraints. So, for example, the number of unwanted dependencies in a project. Residual bug density, of course, is, is another measure of uh, residual issues that may exist in code. And then we move on to the, the more objective measures of, code, of, of coding attributes. So function complexity, which covers cyclomatic complexity or depth of nesting or the path count through the function is um, a general measure, set of measures on function complexity. We have a, an equivalent set of class measures which cover class cohesion, which measures how well the methods and the data items in a class um, uh, cohabitate, you might say. We have class coupling, which deals with how classes interact with other ones, and we have inheritance depth, which, which deals with that um, topic of inheritance. And then we have other measures covering both functions and classes, which look at how they relate to other functions, the number of subroutine calls, and the number of methods per class. Uh, we have file comment density, volume of operators, operands, variable counts. And lastly, we have measures of how much you change the code between versions. So there's a measure called code churn. And the number of code clones is an interesting one, which um, looks at how much replicated code you might have within your project. So probably the main point to make about quality profiling and using metrics is that you can build aggregates, what we call compounds, from all these different collections. And because you can do that, and, and in order to do that properly, you do need a project hierarchy that supports that concept. And that was principle five, the idea that you can roll up information from functions into a project level metric. So probably the the best way to try and describe how this might work in practice is to, is to go back and talk about ISO 9126. So this, um, this uh, standard talks about a quality model of code, and, and that quality model describes a set of characteristics of software projects. So the main headline ones that they talk about are reliability, maintainability, Portability is one, there's testability and reusability, and in actual fact the list goes on a little bit beyond that. But these are reasonable quality measures of code. So if we take in particular one of those, we could for example take the cyclomatic complexity for functions and roll that up to some project level. We can take the class cohesion and roll that up to a project level, and we could measure the residual bug density of a project and accumulate all of those individual measures together to produce a reliability figure. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a reasonable way of, of accumulating a, an overall project level reliability figure. Likewise, we could take the average number of calls within each function. Uh, we could take the average number of methods per class and we could take the uh, compliance uh, average per file rolled up to a project level, and we could describe all of that as being uh, an overall maintainability measure. So if I just go back at this stage to um, QA Verified to give you a picture of how that might look, um, let me go to a project measure. And what this graph is showing us here is a trend line of, of particular measures, the ones that are picked up here looking back through the entire sequence of snapshots. So it's given me a nice overall figure of uh, whatever measures I decide to pick up here. So if we just focus on the reliability one that I just mentioned there, well, we've got residual bug density average per source file. That's a measure that we can, it's a compound metric that we can accumulate into QA Verify. We have a measure that I've defined as the average lack of class cohesion, which um, is another measure that, that we've accumulated up to a top project level. And then we have the average function complexity. Um, so putting all of these together in a, a weighted sense between all those three contributors, we can arrive at a, an overall reliability figure 
which tracks like so over the, all the different snapshot versions. So it's quite a powerful way of using uh, metrics to, um, you know, to represent quality a picture, a quality picture of your source project. And in this case, I thought the ISO 9126 was a pretty good example of how that might be applied.